Ferg, the reporter, and we are live in the cool bus backstage at the beautiful Walmart amp, and we've got so blessed to have uh, Joel Hoekster right here, one of the guitarists from White Snake. How's it going, brother? Uh, it's going great, man. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, and I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time out for just to spend a few minutes to talk to us and, and let us know what's going well, on. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate right. it, man. All good. If you guys don't know him, you know him. You've heard his stuff. He's on everything. Let's go from Access Hollywood all the way down to White Snake. So we got A to W. Unless you went to a Z, a Zappa, or something like that. But you've heard his music. He's one of the uh, great guitarists of our day. And uh, one question: What is it like to be in a White Snake? It's great, man. I mean, I think White Snake's a guitarist dream, man. It's great riffs and great solos and. Did working for David, I mean, he's rock royalty, man. Mm -hmm. What's not to like? He's such a great guy, really, truly great guy. And uh, killer lineup, having Tommy Aldridge oh. back there on, on drums. I mean, yeah, it's amazing, man. And having Red Beach on the other side of the stage on guitar and uh, Michael Devon and, and Michele Lupe. Uh, it's, Thank you for saying that. I was yeah. wondering exactly yeah, how, how to say it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, he's an, he's an Italian guy, so exactly. yeah, it's not easy, right? It looks like Michelle. It does, it it's does. It's spelled like Michelle. I was going to have to ask when I came here today. Yeah. I was gonna, okay, how exactly? Because I... I would have just said, you know, Michelle or Michael. That's all right. The, ba it, the band Italian. hasn't really figured it out yet but either. It's Italian. So we just wing it. All right. Uh, now the Purple album, and if people don't know, Purple album is is David Coverdale when he's with Deep Purple. They wrote a bunch of songs, and and you guys have brought it to life in this century, and it, it's it's wonderful. <laughs> well, it was in this century. Well, well I suppose. Well, I guess it is a new century. It is. It is. And, and <laughs> after I said that, I went, okay, good. Yeah, it really is a new century. Uh, but you guys have taken it and you've made these songs up to date and beautiful. How was it working on all of that with, with the guys? It was great, man. I mean, uh, David was really great about wanting to reimagine the songs and snake them up, as he put it, or put a fresh coat of paint uh -huh. on them. Uh, I think if it was like a note for note re record type of scenario, it wouldn't have appealed to me, quite frankly. So just having the opportunity to be creative with them and do our own thing with them and uh, put our own stamp on them and have some fun with it uh, was, was very appealing. And like I said, you know, just to be able to work with this lineup and with David, mm -hmm. and yeah, what's not to like, man? Did you get, when you were recording it and doing all of that, do you get to put your own spin on it? And, I mean, you said it wasn't note for note or anything, but you get to make it yours? Yeah. I mean, I think one thing about the old, the original Deep Purple versions of these songs is they were built around one guitar part. Mm -hmm. uh, so Reb was going to have a lot of those covered with me coming in by the time I had joined. So for me, it was about trying to invent a second guitar part in a lot of spots or an, wow. another texture or sound and obviously doing our own thing with the guitar solos. So um, I felt like, despite the fact these songs were already existing, I felt like uh, you know I flexed my creative muscles quite a bit on the record. Absolutely. Now, the uh, in the video, Soldier of Fortune, that, how do you get the tone that you get out of that acoustic? It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, I thanks mean, so much. It just kind of wraps you around out of that Taylor. It's, how do you get something like that? Thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, you said the key word for me. I mean, Taylor guitars have been really good to me uh, over the years. They're just always very consistent and very playable sound great and play great uh so i mean the two characteristics of a i suppose look great as well we can they throw do. that in there but is that a 914 uh i don't remember david's got a lot of tailors i mean it looked like the taylor showroom man when we were cutting the purple <laughs> album there it was crazy they uh they were really good to us and david had a bunch of them there already so uh yeah, the, the, and then of course Michael McIntyre did a great job of mm -hmm. uh, of Mike and the guitar up, and, and there is some DI in there as well. Did uh, did Reb and uh, David also help produce the the Purple album? Well, they were the producers. Okay, of they the, were. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I think Mikey Mac was a producer on it as well. Michael McIntyre, mm -hmm. I believe. My, my, yeah, Mikey and. Yeah, yeah, Mikey's, uh, you know, uh, did a great job of engineering on the record and such a great guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, as far, I was like a late addition to it. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the pre-production was already existing and, and things were in development by the time I joined the band. So, How, yeah. how was that call? I mean, that's got to be a neat call when they said, hey, David Coverdale wants you to come and jam with him. Or was it, had you had a previous relationship with him and... Not really. I mean, we we had met like briefly when Night Ranger opened for White Snake uh, in gosh, I don't even know what year now. I'm just going to venture a guess at like 2013 or something mm -hmm. like that. 
Uh, so, yeah, I think that's right. Summer of 2013. So, yeah, I, I, when I heard Doug left the band, I put out some feelers, and I didn't really hear anything back at first, and then I think some well-respected people were recommending me to David, and that led to us eventually meeting in May of uh, 2014. Excellent. Yeah. Now, we're, uh, you're almost done with the North American part of this Purple Tour, right? Correct. And then you go to Japan, you got Osaka, I believe, in October, and then you go on the uh, European part with Def Leppard. Dead Days, you're going to be show. Uh, along with you there. In well, we'll be doing uh, Japan and uh, and then Europe with the Dead Daisies, and then the Def Leppard run is actually with Black Star Riders. The okay, Ireland, okay. Ireland UK stuff is all right. Yeah. Okay, I saw that. Yes, I did. Absolutely, you're right, and I'm wrong, which happens quite a bit. Now, touring, how's the fans been? I mean, it's really cool. White Snake has always been known for the guitarist, as you said, and I mean, from the beginning, Bernie Marsden, I think, uh, uh, Mickey Moody. From then up till now, man, it must have been nice to be sought after, to be in that lineage, and, and to know that you're one of the baddest ones. Oh, yeah, I mean, hey, I, I just take the workmanlike approach to it, and as far as all that goes, and just try and make sure that I'm doing the best I can with it. Uh, and that's with everything, not just right. playing with Whitesnake. That's just kind of treating your uh, playing guitar like a job, and not just trying to make it all fun and games and, and blow it off and, and you know you got to make sure it's a, it's a serious thing and, and uh, I like to make sure the fans get their hard earned money's worth and give them a high energy show and have some fun that's man. what uh, a friend of ours they uh, saw the saw the show in Tulsa and they said you and Rev are just absolutely amazing the, just the tightness of everything is just fabulous thanks yeah we've we've uh, had a really great run out here I mean David th thinks we're onto something magical with the lineup and uh, the chemistry's been great the band is all laughs and everybody's getting along it just seems like it's really been like rock and roll bliss out here and the, and the fans have been great the only thing uh, that's been thrown at us is bras um. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool yeah that's, that's very yeah. cool yeah. are you guys thinking yeah. about writing anything more with the white snake going forward have you well, David's got a couple of recording projects in mind, and I can't get too into specifics with that. I mean, that's all going to come down to what David wants to do, and uh, but I'm certainly on board and would love to be creative and, and you know put our heads together. On Excellent. Some, some now, stuff. October 16th, that's going to be a big day for you. Yes. You've got a new album coming out. Uh, it's called, uh, and I had it, Dying to Live. I had all this stuff memorized. But Dying to Live is coming out, and I, I listened to the uh, first song, Dude, it's awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I a lot of people have been asking me over the years, how come you don't just put out like a rock record? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't really want to be a lead singer. And and then it's weird because I get a singer on there, and then what do I call it? You know, do I call it a Joel Hoekstra album? Because I'm not. I wouldn't want to be just taking ten minute guitar solos on right. a, on an album like that. That's going to be about vocal songs. So. Uh, that's why I gave it a project name, Joel Hoekstra's 13, mm -hmm. because I figured that was the most appropriate thing. It does. It sounds bandish, but the reality is, is I did all the writing on it, all the lyrics and melodies and everything. Right. And so, uh, I mean, that ended up being a real blessing. I feel like emotionally connected to the album, and uh, hopefully that makes it different than a lot of like the quote unquote like super band albums that are coming right. out where other people are doing the writing for those bands and I mean I feel like in this scenario I did all the writing it's it's I'm very emotionally connected to it and uh, and I view it like these musicians are all my favorite guys who are willing to help me out on it right and I mean you've got an all you've got a great line I mean Jeff Scott Soto and Carmine and Tony Franklin on bass well Vinny Vinny Abbasi oh Vinny yeah, Vinny yeah. I'm sorry yeah, yeah Jeff Jeff Scott Soto and Russell Allen singing lead on it and Vinny Abbasi Tony Franklin and Derek Sherinian right. and and yeah, I think I covered everybody yeah. there. There are some other people that contribute as well, like my friend Chloe Lowry from TSO sang on a duet with Jeff. That's killer. She's awesome. Oh, that is excellent. Well, I want to, if there's any way I can listen to it first, write a review, would love to. Love awesome. To. Thanks, man. Uh, well, we're back. If you need more of him, it's joelhoekstra.com or, of course, on whitesnake.com. I got to let him get back and do what he do. This is, this is Ferg the Reporter. We're in the very cool bus sitting backstage at the Walmart Amp. And we are out of here. Thank you, brother. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Cheers.